our top story. Depression hidden behind a mask of enthusiasm. A Salford councillor commits suicide in his home. Festive drinks are a sign that Christmas is here, but have you stopped just to think about how many calories you are consuming in your festive beverage? Last weekend, Julie Walters went to Liverpool to promote her new movie, Film Stars Don't Die. I'm just very nostalgic about it, and I'm, I'm just part of my heart here. You know? Manchester hosted the annual Northwest Football Awards with lots of celebrities and footballers present. Good afternoon, I'm Jessica Fox. And I'm Dean Byrne. An inquest has ruled that Salford councillor, who hid his depression from his family and friends, has hung himself at home. Our correspondent, Charlie Mulholland, is here to tell us more. So, Charlie, can you tell us more about the inquest? Well, yeah, um, Mr Longshaw uh, took his life uh, earlier this year, on September the 5th. He was at Bar uh, Bolton Coroner's Court this morning, ruled that Mr Longshaw had taken it his own life. He was a highly respected member in the Salford Council. He'd worked as a senior housing officer for 25 years, and he was actually part of the reconstruction uh, project for Pendleton. So, Longshaw has worked at the council for 25 years, is that correct? Yeah, in, in a statement, his wife said that he enjoyed his job very much and he enjoyed life as well. He was actually on a holiday in Cuba uh, with his daughter and his former wife uh, earlier this year where he was discussing the future with his daughter and he was basically like saying how happy he was to be with his family. Um, he was found a few weeks later by his decorator, unfortunately um, found hung in his own garage, uh, listening to music and even left a suicide note for his, um, his wife and his daughter. Um, we've actually got uh, a statement from the coroner. The coroner said yeah. that this was a particularly tragic and sad case. Paul Longshaw was a public servant and a valuable member of the local authority with a particular skill. He devoted his life to those skills for the community. A very sad, tragic story. It does. It sounds very tragic. Well, thank you for joining us, Charlie. Thank you. Ballroom dancing has become more popular in recent years, especially now that Strictly Come Dancing is a weekend must watch for people all across the country. But have you seen Wheelchair Ballroom? Our reporter, Jess Farrington, shimmied on down to the club in Manchester to see the sport in action. How about quick wheeling instead of quick stepping? Welcome to a whole new world of dance. Now, most of us have probably watched Strictly Come Dancing at some point, and maybe we've even taken ballroom and Latin dance classes ourselves. Now, you'd think that you'd need your legs to do this, but I'm here today to talk to Strictly Wheels, a charity who teaches ballroom and Latin dancing to people in wheelchairs. So I did um, some short films for BBC Get Inspired, and this is one of the dance, this is one of the sports that I did, um, and I hated it. Because <laughs> I love dances, so I used to do ballroom and Latin when I was younger, and I, and I like disco dance, so I went with her and fell in love with it, and then next thing you know, we're dancing a year later, so. It's just a lot more to consider because and there's so much more fluidity you can get with the body, but with, a, with the chair, there's only so many moves the chair can do. Wheels are more painful than someone stepping on you, and I have clashed uh, with a few people. No, no, I think, I think. Learning to dance, learning to exercise in a safe environment, um, and just learning to move your chair, and, and that's it. That's, and we just set it off because we wanted people to have fun. So with more people like Paula and Gary, dance is going to become more inclusive and bring a little more Strictly Magic to people's lives. Jess Farrington, Keys News. As the Christmas season fast approaches, we're seeing more and more of those festive cups out and about. Our health correspondent, Richard Griffiths, is here to tell us more about the dangerous amount of sugar in our drinks. So, Richard, on the high street cups, uh, what are these um, drinks full of? How much sugar are they full of and why? OK, Dean, so um, a recent study by Kitchen Makers Ren revealed that these Christmas drinks, special editions, contain something between four and 600 calories in each cup. But probably what's more startling is the amount of sugar in each one. So this is the NHS recommendation of a daily amount of sugar, which is 30 grams. Um, if we take these three... Uh, cups here. This one is from Cafe Nero. This is a salted caramel latte and this one con contains 
38 grams of sugar, which is already more than your daily allowance for okay. sugar. This one here is the Starbucks gingerbread latte, and this one contains just over 48 grams of sugar. And probably the most startling one of all, the Costa Coffee Billionaire's Hot Chocolate contains nearly 79 grams of sugar, and I've spilt half of it on the table. But that is the equivalent of 3.3 Mars bars in one glass of hot chocolate. Wow, well, I tell you what, I won't be putting that amount of sugar in my tea in, in the morning. Certainly not. Um, mm -hmm. a, a recent um, Organisation for Economic Cooperation okay. and Development yeah. study um, revealed that the UK is now the fattest country in Western Europe, with obesity rates rising oh. faster than the US. So it's no wonder with okay. drinks like this creeping in. OK, well, thank you for that, Richard. You. OK, so now, with all these various little drinks here, um, we see people... Now, if you're in town at the weekend, there was a vegan festival happening at the Sash Hotel. Uh, if, if you ever got a chance to go down, let's have a little see. The vegan festival has arrived in Manchester with endless amounts of food stalls for you to try vegan food from all parts of the world. There are charity groups giving talks and even people providing vegan inspired massages. With veganism becoming more and more popular in the UK, festivals like this are great for small vegan businesses to become known to the public. It's generally about promoting veganism and for people to be more aware of the vegan charities and what they represent and all the lovely food and entertainments that the uh, vegan world has to offer. Um, well, it's very hard these days to find cruelty-free products in um, Manchester and really a lot of places without having to pay like massive postage and packaging fees. So I thought if I come down here, I can support local businesses and I can save myself some money, which is always good. Set up by the Vegan Organic Network, this festival is to make people aware of the vegan movements all around the world and what beautiful natural produce can be made with just organic natural ingredients. We're here today um, displaying our food which is Caribbean vegan food, ITAL, VITAL, Caribbean vegan food. In 2012, we started up this mobile business doing Caribbean vegan at pop-ups, festivals, events, private catering. So that's, what we've been, that's how long we've been doing this mobile arm of the business. Sea Shepherd is not a protest group as such. We believe in direct action. What we'll do is uh, the many campaigns we run throughout the world, which is... Uh, poaching, whaling, shark finning, uh, habitat destruction, anything concerned with the marine environment will get involved in it, but we believe in direct action will actually go in to try and stop what's happening. We don't protest it. So, Lars, have you tried any vegan meal alternatives? Well, unfortunately, uh, I haven't, but I've uh, checked up on everything that's going on in the sports world. And uh, some of the country's most famous footballers descended on Manchester earlier this week as a city, uh, the city played host to the annual North West Football Awards. The event celebrates footballing success both on and off the pitch. The great and the good of North West sport descended on Manchester this week to celebrate the region's footballing success over the last year. As well as celebrating the stars of North West football, the awards also recognised a number of worthy causes. The adults side went over to, to Barcelona uh, to compete in an international tournament, even though we are a club side. And lucky enough, uh, we performed on that on that basis and, and, and won. To be recognised on the same stage tonight is obviously a lot of professional clubs, a lot of big names. It's incredible. In a star-studded cast, it's easy to get carried away. But humility was the order of the day for many a winner. No matter the awards ceremony, we're writing gigs, so it's, it's, it's not bad, is it? But uh, yeah, to get individual awards is brilliant. But it's obviously all down to the team, so it's uh, 
it was a good team effort last year and it often nice, it's just nice for me tonight. It does mean a lot to get recognised by the fans and I think at a team like Manchester City we're, we're full of superstars so rising star it does recognise the younger players. I know George Stanway was nominated last year so yeah I'm, I'm really humbled to have won this award. This year's winners are next year's inspiration and who knows who might get the call next year. Now, Salford City celebrated the official, official opening of the Peninsula Stadium on Sunday by hosting a friendly match against their owners, the Class of 92. I went along to the opening. The Peninsula Stadium was officially opened on Sunday as Salford took on the Class of 92 and Friends team for a friendly. With activities and entertainment before the match, as well as prominent players on the pitch, the atmosphere inside the Peninsula Stadium was electric. The game was attended by a record crowd of over 4,000 people, among them the one and only Sir Alex Ferguson. Following the players' warm-up, the stadium gathered to pay their respects to the ones who lost their lives during World War I. The game itself was also an entertaining encounter as the Class of 92 went into the break with a 4-3 lead. However, the game was not only filled with great goals, it was also filled with clumsy moments. At half time, he asked the fans what they think about the involvement of the class of 92. It's amazing, I'm watching a scene of famous people such as Bill and Gary Neville. It's amazing to see. Well, it's nice, I think the main thing is here, it generates a lot of extra publicity and a lot of interest opening the club, uh, which will hopefully see more, more people come down and support the local team. The second half, on the other hand, did not live up to the first. The only goal of the second half came late, as Salford equalised the 4-4. After the match, we spoke to Salford City player Mark Nottingham about the match and about his views on the Class of 92's influence on Salford. It was entertaining, uh, there was a lot going on, a lot of goals. Uh, there was a big turnout, so I'm um, sure that's what everyone wants to see, like a big entertaining game with loads of goals, so yeah, very good. It was massive, I mean, like, with, with, with the people who were involved and all that stuff, um, it's massive, like, all the people, like, a lot of people from the area want to see what's going on. In terms of promotion, it's, it's, it's going to be a massive thing for the club. The club's got a um, winning right which is going up, and uh, it's, it's a very, very good thing. Lars Magnus Royce and Michael Plant at the Peninsula Stadium for Keys News. It was a great atmosphere at the Peninsula Stadium with so much going on. Well, uh, Jess, would you have a go at that bubble football? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know if I'll be trying that one out. <laughs> The new movie, Film Stars Don't Die, premiered in Liverpool, its home city this week. Our reporter Ellen Milligan went to meet some of the stars of the film. There may be another famous face associated with Liverpool now. The true story, filmed across this famous city, was written by Peter Turner in 1984. It has now been turned into a film starring Annette Bening, Jamie Bay, Dame Julie Waters and Vanessa Redgrave. This film follows the love affair between a young working class Liverpudlian lad and the world famous film star Gloria Graham. And it's happening here where the story was born. The story is fantastic and it's, and it's true and it's really interesting. You know, the fact that these two people were drawn to one another is absolutely fascinating. And the fact that she was once a famous Hollywood actress at the top of her game and all of that. And, and, and the fact that he's an actor, it's just really, I just found it really interesting. And what's your favourite memory which maybe was relayed in this film? I think... Um I think the dancing. I need a partner for my dance class. If I make you a drink, can you come into my room and hustle with me? If you fix me a drink, I'll come in and clean your bathroom. <laughs> it was tough in a way, to, you know, to kind of look back on your life of 35 years ago and you know, on this story. And, and so it was an emotional experience. And the three of us sat together at the end and just cried. We all had a little kind of, you know, a tear. And then we went and had a, had a bed. <laughs> Something about it just really touched me, you know, I thought it was a very moving and emotional story. Yeah. But a beautiful story and it was funny and it has all those things, it's not just a kind of, you know, a, t a tear jerker of a story, it, was, it has lots more, it's a lot of many layers. I spoke to the doctor, he's told me what's wrong with him. Could you take me to Liverpool? I could get better there. This emotional tale of an Oscar-winning film star may well lead to Oscars for the film stars telling her story. Ellen Milligan, Keys News, 
Liverpool. Say it again, Peter. Liverpool. Oh. Now for the weather with Benjamin Stacey. Good afternoon. There's a thick cloud across the northwest tonight with temperatures scraping into the double figures and for what sun there is today it will be setting at 4.30. Low winds today so if you're planning on visiting the Christmas markets over the next few days you're going to need to wrap up warm but you won't be needing a brolly. And as we're visiting the ice rink and spinning fields temperatures will feel freezing and add a truly Christmassy feel. That's all from us on this week's episode of Keys News. Goodbye. Goodbye.